Now, the next two items have to do with repetition in the story. One of them you've heard me mention a few times in passing as I talked about some of the examples, and that is uh, echoing. Echoing means you repeat an action or a situation or a line of dialogue in the story so that when the audience hears it for the third time or more, it's registering and, and it gets locked into our brain. Sometimes you do that because it, it sort of reminds your audience where the character was the first time you heard that. So, so it's, um, you, you hear a line at the beginning. Like uh, one of the thing, the word in, uh, one word that's repeated often in A Few Good Men is honor. And, be, and but every time we hear honor, we see a somewhat different way that Callie, uh, repre, you know, reacts to that. So at first it has no meaning to him at all. It's just, what does he care? He's going to defend these guys. He'll plea bargain them. He'll go down there, easy peasy. And, and honor, you know, Joe mentions it, but it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. Then when we, we see that these kids, these Marines that he's defending, they are, honor is important to them. He's like, that's mysterious to him. He thinks that's kind of a silly thing to do. Then when they don't want to plead guilty because it's a question of honor, now the honor is standing in his way. And then at the, at the very end of the movie, when they now salute him and he says, you know, an officer, officer I forget what the line is that Marines say, but they call him an officer. One of the, one of the defendants calls him an officer says, and we know that means he has now shown his honor. That is so much more powerful than it would have been if we'd never heard the word honor throughout the movie and hadn't seen how his attitude toward that idea had changed. Okay, so that's echoing. And uh, you see the same thing in Beat the Bridge. How many times in that story do you read the words, beat the bridge, beat the bridge, beat the bridge? And part of it is just there's something about that kind of repetition and echoing that pulls us, that keeps us in the story because it keeps reminding, remember, this is what he's got to do. This is the impossible goal. This is the impossible goal. He's got to beat the bridge. He's got to beat the bridge. But it also has a, a great use when you're telling a story where you have a message and, or, or where you want to convey a deeper theme. Because by the time that word has been used throughout that story, then beat the bridge takes on a different meaning that it's not just about getting to the bridge before the bus gets there. It's about staying, staying the course and really persevering to go after what you go, what, after you want. Whatever you do, don't give up if you can possibly help it because that's where you're going to find the greatest fulfillment. Whatever your bridge is that you need to reach, whatever bridge you want to beat, so to speak, that's what's going to, that's what's going to fulfill your life more. That's where you're going to learn the lesson that I learned. And so it gives sort of a label to his deeper, deeper concept because it comes to represent that deeper sort of meaning. A brilliant use of echoing is in the TED Talk that Johan Hari says, because the first example of antidepressants not being medicine, when he goes to Cambodia and sees those psychologists or those, those doctors there, and how they have that and they and he they tell him the story that he passes on to us about they needed to figure out what to do about this poor guy who you know stepped on a landmine and now he had an artificial limb and it made it almost impossible both physically and emotionally for him to continue in the rice paddies etc and they said so we figured out you know we'd give him a cow and so giving him the cow because it gave him a new lease on life, he stopped being depressed. And they said, isn't that an antidepressant? So it's a really clever story. It's fun. It's a great introduction, a great first story for Johan to tell in his, in his speech. And we don't hear it again until the very last line of his speech. He says, where he conveys, you know, there are cows all over the place for us or something. I wish I remembered so I could quote verbatim because it's a brilliant way he says it. But he echoes that idea of the cow. Because what he's saying is there is an answer to depression that goes beyond this is a malfunction. He says it's an opportunity. It's a signal. And if you're willing to see it that way, whether you're suffering from depression or you're just not as aware as you should be of it, then be aware that out there are all kinds of possibilities for getting people out of depression rather than giving them pills. 
And his shorthand for that is the cow, because just like Beat the Bridge, it takes on a meaning that's more than just, he's not saying, obviously, that's subtext as well. He's not saying, go buy a cow. He's saying there are opportunities for uh, getting rid of depression and, and living a more fulfilled life out there wherever you look. You just have to find them, recognize them, find them, and know that's the answer. And that's just a terrific example of how he echoed this one idea. And by say, saving it and saying it again at the end, it just really drives home his point.